Om Shanti, good morning. So the charioteer, <laughs> it is a symbol that is used a lot in many actually cultures, but particularly <clears throat> Baba talks about it in the context of the soul's relationship with its body and with other people. And also in the Gita, you know, Arjuna <clears throat> is the one who's driving the chariot and he has to fight the battle and he loses courage, he loses hope and doesn't know what he's going to do and throws down his bow, the bow that was blessed by the gods and could achieve everything. And what helped him get through all of this? It was the relationship he had with God. And so actually the Gita is the dialogue between the soul and the Supreme Soul. And in this dialogue, the soul Arjuna is trying to understand uh, actually what is yoga, who am I, what is my destiny, what is karma, all these things. But how are we to be charioteers now actually? What does it mean to be the charioteer? Well, it is the essence of Raj Yoga. It is the essence of soul sovereignty. <clears throat> the charioteer, I don't know if you know anything about charioteers, but in the old days, in the ancient days, um, <clears throat> the charioteer physically always had to be light and mentally always had to be focused and when they were, for example, the Olympic Games, um, there was a chariot race, but whichever team of horses won, it was not the charioteer that got the prize. The one who got the prize was the owner of the team. So the charioteer had to be really just the instrument and, and the charioteer not only had to, he had to be focused, <clears throat> but he had to be able to guide the horses in the right way because they had to run a particular course. So if the reins were too tight, the horses would uh, rebel. If the reins were too loose, the horses would go wherever they wanted to go. So the charioteer had to always get this balance of when to tighten and when to loosen, especially when it the, the chariot went around the bend because that was the, always the most dangerous point. So spiritually, how does that apply to us? That definitely, you know, I, Baba spoke about it this morning actually in the Muli, the virtue of lightness. If I don't have the virtue of lightness as I'm running this race, towards the destination of perfection, towards the destination of complete union with God. If I don't remain light, then I'm going to get caught up in some side scene. And the course, the course is the Srimat that either charioteer must follow. And Srimat, Srimat is simply the principles of truth. These principles are guiding me to success. If I'm able to really understand them in that way, because sometimes people think that Srimat, uh, it's something, a law that is outside of me that I have to follow. But actually, Srimat, the principles of the truth, of right living, they are outside, but they're also inside. And so the charioteer must always be aware of that and must follow. Because if the charioteer doesn't follow these principles, then the chariot goes right off course. And so this, first of all, this virtue of lightness is very, very important. And Baba mentioned it this morning, what, what, what creates this virtue of lightness? In one word, Surrender. This is not, service is not my task. Service is the task of the Father. And 
Even purification is also the task of the Father. But what is it that I have to do? I have to give myself in every moment, in every thought. And you see, a good charioteer is always one. Another virtue they have besides being light is they are very attentive. If even for a moment they become distracted, the horses go their own way. The horses of my senses, but especially the horses of my old sanskaras. They can really move in any direction. I'm sure you've had this experience, eh? One thought, just one wrong thought from an old sanskars, an old sanskar just makes me move sometimes in a very unexpected direction. <clears throat> and so with the surrender that the soul has to the father, then what does, do, does the charioteer feel? What does the soul feel? That actually Bab Dada's hands are on my hands and guiding me actually to success. I'm not alone. It's a very important uh, feeling to have, a very uh, powerful feeling that I'm not alone in this race towards my liberation, towards my success, towards my perfection. <clears throat> and the spirit charioteer must always have the feeling of this spiritual companionship. Otherwise, the, the other companion will come, Maya. And Maya always looks for a chance. Is the charioteer becoming heavy by thinking too much, by worrying, by looking at others? This, this, is, this is when the charioteer and the chariot go really off the track, when you look, when they start looking at others. And again, in the old days, a charioteer had to be very focused. He couldn't look at what the other charioteer is thinking or what the other team of horses are doing. He had to keep focused. When I keep focused, then I will not go and make that big mistake of looking at others. If I look only to learn, we look only to learn. We don't look for any, we don't look for any other reason. And the charioteer has to be very kind to his horses, <laughs> because if he's not kind to his horses, then they're going to rebel. Yeah. Oh, okay. Does anyone need a Spanish translation? But does anyone need it? Uh, oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> What was the last point? <laughs> I tried, yes. You have to be kind to the horses. So treat your senses kindly. Treat your body kindly. Don't suppress it. Anything you suppress, um, it's a violence. It's not natural. And uh, it will react at one point. And the charioteer knows that the senses, the world outside, the other actors, they have to play their part. And it's all a matter of understanding. It's like a good charioteer understands each of his horses. He knows their strengths, their weaknesses, and he accommodates to that. He knows um, which responsibility to give to which horse, actually. Some are in the lead, some are better on the side. And it's a matter of wisdom. When, there are, when there's wisdom and kindness together, then the charioteer moves along well. Hmm? But if the charioteer is immature, what's the sign of an immature charioteer? He either suppresses or gives in to letting all the old habits and the old things just express themselves. So a charity through wisdom and kindness 
is disciplined. To be disciplined is not the same as being suppressive. It's a very different thing. Don't ever mix it up. <laughs> and discipline comes from a very deep love for the truth, the very deep love for the one who's guiding me, and also a very deep faith in the aim, and a faith in the self that I will reach, I am reaching this aim, I am achieving this aim. And here I am, I the soul, I am the charity. I've had many chariots. And at this point in my existence, this chariot, although it may be in one way the most difficult, the, the, the one that is not in good condition, it's my, my most important chariot. Because through this chariot, I the charioteer meet the one who is giving me knowledge. I'm meeting the one who helps me to understand. I'm meeting the one who is giving me love and peace. So let me respect the chariot, but don't let me be dominated by it. So the charioteer always, another quality they have besides lightness, attentiveness, surrender, is balance. They're very good in balancing things. A good charioteer will never go to any extreme. And when you see the self going into an extreme, this is where I have to have the discipline to put the brake. I have to understand I'm going to an extreme. An extreme of an emotion, an extreme of thought. I have to see it, I have to recognize it. So the charioteer is aware of the self. And then, when there's recognition and awareness, then there's action, eh? not just I, I recognize it or I'm aware of it, then I have to act to make the change, to move properly. So the first thing the charioteer has to learn is to be bodiless, and then egoless, and then viceless. Bodiless, egoless, viceless are all expressions of purity, different levels of purity. Bodiless. Bodiless is the original purity of the self. Beyond matter, beyond time, beyond the senses, I'm just a point, an eternal point of energy. That is my original form. And when I remember myself as bodiless, then I return home, the bodiless world, where my bodiless brothers live, where my bodiless father and mother live. And we all look the same. You know, people in the family usually look the same, don't they? <laughs> They have the family eyes or the family nose or the family this. It's the same up there. All six billion or how many souls there are, all the same. <laughs> because the Father is the same. So they are points of light. Now, the power or the quality may be different, but in essence all the same. So when I'm bodiless, I move beyond the attachment and identification both with matter and with other souls. Because that's the basis of my sorrow. Sorrow, whether it is confusion, whether it is loneliness, whether it is fear, whatever sorrow there may be, the reason for that is attachment and identification with the other actors or with attachment to my own self. In the bodiless stage, the number one virtue that will help me in everything starts to emerge, and that is detachment. God gives me love, and I detach. Because if I don't receive the love, if I don't really tune in to the knowledge, it's very e difficult to be detached. It's a difficult thing. 
But as the soul receives love and as the soul starts to experience the eternal purifying silence of both the father and the home, it starts to feel very secure. Because one of the big aspects of sorrow now is insecurity. And you see, attachments to whatever it is, to whatever it is, always, the primary thing it creates is always insecurity. Always. And when people are insecure, then they start to do funny things. They want name, they want position, they want to be appreciated, they feel insulted easily. This is all because the, the, there's insecurity. And so I have to become detached. And Baba is helping me with this. He's helped me to become detached. So the first step of the charioteer is this bodiless stage. Accepting this invitation to go back home, to go to the Father, and feel the security and warmth of the Eternal Father's love. And in that state of of relationship with Baba and the home, the one thing the soul feels is complete. It feels complete and it feels liberated. There's no attraction or pull to anything. Because liberation is this. What's liberation? Liberation is I don't have needs that create accounts. Liberation is gives me the feeling of being very, very, very content. And so this is why Baba says very often, go home, return home. This is the exercise that the charioteer does because the charioteer, the Raj Yogi charioteer, has um, quite a few courses to run. <laughs> it's going home, it's going to the angelic world, and it's being here. <laughs> and has to really get it right. But if I start with this, first race of going home, it doesn't take long, then I'm able to experience power because soul to soul, nothing in between, enables the soul to receive the current of Sakash. And that's, you know, when we speak often of being, of being empowered, being empowered does not come through praise of others because that is what we're used to isn't it? Someone says something good about me, it sustains my image of myself or whatever. It's not bad, I mean it's not a bad thing when it's genuine, but even at this particular point, this is not what will empower me. What empowers me is power, <laughs> spiritual power, which will come when I have that connection. And then egoless. Actually, the angel has to be egoless because the angel truly feels that Baba is moving it. The today in the Muli it said about it doesn't feel it's using its own sanskars, but they are the father's sanskars. An angel as an instrument cannot have ego. I want this, I want that, should be like this, should be like that. And what melts the ego is the feeling of friendship with, with Baba. When I, the soul has this feeling of friendship, <clears throat> then it wants to be like the Father. It's inspired to be like the Father. And as the soul is becoming egoless, then the heart becomes bigger. You know, a person with a lot of ego can never have a big heart. It's always measuring, calculating, getting a bit, you know, get stingy. Always waits for others to do things first. This is ego. But as the soul's becoming egoless, it develops generosity like the father. Benevolence. Because benevolence is Baba's name, Shiva, the benevolent one. We are his children, so we are benevolent ones. 
And no one is ever afraid of an angel. Always the angel is the one who is the embodiment of light and everybody feels the presence of God, feels the presence of the good. So as the soul becomes egoless, it starts to have in itself this sanskar of benevolence or generosity. And therefore it, it is called a server. And when one serves, one cannot... Um, when, you, when you're serving, you, you have to be very unlimited. You can't say, well, I'll, ch I'll serve only this country or I'll serve only these souls. The angel with the Father is above, and this is the lighthouse, and that light goes out to everyone. This is also, you know, the charioteer who reaches this destination, it starts to understand that this is the most important role I have in all of the cycle. You know, we have many roles through all the cycle, many costumes, many partners, but in this particular time, in this particular consciousness, my costume is the costume of light. My partner is the father and my role is um, egoless service. What does that mean, egoless service? I don't need a return. It's not even, I don't want any return. I don't need it. I don't need it. And so the angelic being remains caring, remains loving, but is naturally detached. And it always has Bob Dada there to whisper signals. <laughs> because we are corporeal angels, actually, we're here. <laughs> we're not, our consciousness is up there, but we are here. So we always need that line to be very firmly fixed. Otherwise, the influence of the old world can come. And then the third aspect of purity, viceless. Viceless is for here, for the earth, in our relationships with each other. And in the natural form, it is called the golden and silver age. The viceless consciousness is the basis of the family life. Family as, you know, small family, but also family as human family. Because in these relationships between, you know, soul and souls, but now the souls are in bodies, the souls have um, a relationship that's different from the soul world. Here there is community. The Golden Age is a community of non-violent, viceless beings. Because as soon as a soul starts to become viceless, the violence stops. And the greatest violence is, uh, um, is disrespect towards the existence of the other. Whether that other is another human soul or whether it is nature. Because a viceless soul has respect for matter as well. And this is also why the, the lifespan is much longer in the golden and silver age. So it's natural purity natural virtues. And it's good also to keep this test, the charioteer, while here and learning and maneuvering and <laughs> doing all these things, must keep in mind also this destination. I'm becoming pure through being bodiless. I'm serving with the Father in the pure state as an instrument, but also I'm creating as an instrument, together with others, a pure earth. I'm also serving Mother Earth, Mother Nature. Because sometimes people think, oh, Golden Age, it's far away, or it's a past memory, or who knows, and all of this. No, I, we are serving Mother Earth as well. And we're really creating a community of equality and happiness. And no matter who is king in the golden age or silver age, everyone will feel like a king. 
no matter what they're doing. <laughs> doesn't matter. It's not position consciousness. See, where, there's, where the world is viceless, there's not role or position consciousness. Although there are positions and roles, according to the level of purity, there's not a vicious consciousness of this. It's, you know, the king or queen is there to... Well, they don't actually serve in the Golden and Silver Age, but they're like the mother and father. They just look after. Of course, nobody really needs looking after, but <laughs> everybody's very well. It's, but sometimes it's good to get into this uh, consciousness of what it means to be viceless and the eventual expression of this. Because otherwise the Golden Silver Age can remain a very abstract um, thing. But it's Baba's inheritance for me. I should understand this inheritance. I should appreciate it. So the charioteer is running in these three ways here now. Because the basis of being a very good charioteer is being a student. I have to really be a student. <laughs> and I have to be a master. Because I have to work those rain I have to understand those reins very well. And a student, I must really listen to the teacher, to Baba, as much as possible and understand what he means. Sometimes I don't understand what he means. Or I think I understand. But the proof that I didn't understand properly is pain or sorrow. Either a little bit or or very big. So <clears throat> we can now do meditation, some meditation experimentation with these um, with this idea of the charioteer and these stages of bodiless, egoless and viceless. Okay? And when we are doing the yoga experimentation, one thing that helps a lot is Give yourself to it. Don't doubt. <laughs> Don't overthink. <laughs> Just be there. It helps a lot. Okay. Om Shanti. So there'll be periods of speaking and then periods of silence. So just relax. Become very quiet inside. I begin my journey into silence, gently I focus, and who am I who is focusing? I am an eternal point of energy, I am a peaceful point of energy. I am the charioteer. I sit in the center of my forehead. I am a soul. I, the charioteer, the soul. I have these senses to express myself in the world. And now, as I begin to recognize myself and understand 
who I am. I begin to master my senses, my emotions, my thoughts, and especially I, the charioteer, the soul. I begin to recognize and master my sanskars. In the silence, I return to my true self. I remember my original qualities, peace, freedom, light. Peace, freedom, light. And in this quietness, in the silence, let me remain sitting here. Let me feel myself sitting in the center of my forehead. I feel the pulse of life here. I am this eternal being, unique. pure, peaceful. I am the charioteer, the master, the soul. And now, in silence, I remain in this awareness sitting in the center of my forehead. I remain here, aware of who I am eternally. I move away from the chariot from this attachment and I just become small, tiny, a drop of light, a drop of existence, a point, a precious point of light. This is me. This is really me. The charioteer. The soul. I remain in this awareness, in this position, in peace. In silence.
charioteer, the soul. I sit deep inside myself, deep inside, in silence and awareness. I am this charioteer the master of this chariot. And now I must race. I must go back home to my original not only with my thought but with my awareness home the eternal home where I began my journey from there I came here to the earth, into a chariot. I have run the course of life, of this cycle, many chariots, many races. And now, this is the final race. And I must return home. Home. I begin to remember. Home. There is my beloved father and all my family, my brother souls, drops of eternal light, home, the Father, with this awareness I realize I am there, I am here in my home. I feel sweetness, freedom. I feel content, secure, and I see light, the welcoming light of my father. my eternal friend, Baba, Father, you have awakened me. I am here with you. After so many lives of search, I am here. You are with me. Home again, together. I feel your current of silent love that does not see my weakness. The love that cleanses and uplifts the love that gives me back to myself. A love I have not experienced for many, many lives. 
a love so pure, so real. It can only come from you, the one who is eternally real, eternally truthful, genuine. Father, I absorb your care your love which makes me free free from myself home sweet home let me remain here with you forever. Let me remain here. I am your child, your student, your friend, your instrument. I give myself completely to you and your task. Love, light, silence, I am empowered all of these that come from you, the benevolent one, I remain here with you in our home, our eternal with you, love, your love, light, your light, I remain with you. experience the original purity of the self, of the home, and the constant purity of Baba. I remember everything. absorbed in this freedom. I am absorbed in this liberated state of being, like my father who is eternally liberated. Purity, liberation, fullness. I am just 
a seed of light. Vibrating freedom and peace. And now I come to the world of angelic purity. Here, in this world, I see both my fathers, the incorporeal, eternally pure one, and the angelic father, Brahma, Baba. Father and Mother. And as I move into their lap, I realize I am created from light, from their light. My form is light, my original form and my subtle form of light. The subtle form, the form of service to the earth. Here, in this world of angelic purity, I feel the companionship, the guidance and the love of both fathers 